Unum nostrum, Jesum Christum, qui tecum bebet et regnat, in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, e omnia secula seculorum. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder, builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. Verbum Domini, Deo gratias.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. Verbum Domini, Deo gratias. Sequentia Sancti Evangelii, Secun Mateo. the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Hobed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became 
became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiad. Abiad became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Hazor, Hazor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim the father of Eliad, Eliad the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan, Mathan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus who is called the cross. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. Verbum Domini. Please be seated. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For those who tune in, um, because of the vigil schedule, it has to do with the old and new calendar. We celebrate today in the ordinary form as much as we can, borrowing some elements from our Dominican tradition, showing thus that whatever people might say here or there, this is very much a crowd that is very willing to accept the validity of the Mass and is very willing to, again, be 
be flexible in our matters, but still, it's not one of those groups that has been slandered throughout the press or on blogs or what have you. We are a faithful Catholic group and we will remain faithful to the end, celebrating with every ounce of dignity that we can muster. Now Monday, there will be one Mass only at 9 a.m. and then our regular weekday liturgical schedule will resume on Tuesday. The Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God on January 1st is not a holy day of obligation in the United States because it falls on a Saturday but we will have a 5.30 Vigil Mass on December 31st. And of course, on behalf of the Dominican Friars and staff at Holy Family Old Cathedral, we wish you all a very joyful, merry, and blessed Christmas. It's been a while since we've been able to get together without all this COVID stuff, all these precautions, so we might not realize what to do with our hands when we see each other anymore. So let's do a thought experiment for a second. Now imagine raising one of your hands. Imagine seeing someone in front of you. I want you to take your hand and imagine touching his humanity. Go ahead, touch his humanity for me. Were you able to touch his humanity in your thought experiment? Probably not, because humanity is a universal abstract. It is real, it is definable, it is common to each and every human being, but it is not something that is concrete. You can only touch humanity in so far as you can touch one individual instantiation of what we call humanity. I can touch you as a member of humanity. But you can touch your face. You can touch your eyes. You can touch your nose. You can touch your lips. You can touch your chest over your heart. You can feel that strong beat of your heart, but what you cannot touch, what you cannot feel, is your humanity. G.K. Chesterton once sagely observed that Christ did not love humanity. He never said that he loved humanity, he loved men. Love really at its most excellent sense is at its most personal, not as an abstract concept. When a politician says that he loves America, we often wonder if he also loves Americans. Because often that patriotic pledge might seem hollow. It might seem impersonal. But we say that God is love, and God is, in his most intimate sense, personal. Three persons in one being. Now imagine the person you love most in the world. You can touch his face. You can touch her eyes to wipe away her tears. You can touch his lips. You can touch his chest and feel his heartbeat. You know then who you are touching, even if only in your mind's eye. What are you touching? You are touching a person. First and foremost, someone who is concrete. Love for you has a face, it has eyes, it has a nose, lips, it has a heart that beats. Love for you has a certain smell, perhaps a cologne that reminds you of him. Love for you has a sound. The way her laughter makes those odd little braying sounds like a little donkey, but that you would not trade for all the most beautiful music in the world. Love for you has a touch. The wrinkles on his fingers, the way he gently strokes your face, now let me rephrase 
Chesterton here. God does not love your humanity. God does not love any of your abstract constructions. God loves you, and you could not exist for one second longer if he did not love you and will you to exist. But how do we love God? In Genesis, it is said that Adam and Eve did love God with all their heart, could somehow speak to him friend to friend, face to face in the cool of the afternoon. From the original sin, the first human choice to not love God, mankind, humanity had fallen further and further away from that personal concrete relationship with God. Even though God can never fully depart from his creatures, his creatures always seem to distance themselves further and further and further from him. Whether we knew it or not, we longed for a God who was as close to us in a way that we could literally grasp as an infant grasps at the fingers of her mother. St. John tells us, however, his gospel, perhaps with a touch of sadness, no one has ever seen God. So God, who is so not like us that we are infinitely closer to the bacteria than God is to us in nature, has made his love for us known in the way that it was meant to be known from the beginning. A personal love, a human love, a divine love, all emanating from the one and only God, an ineffable love beyond mere human words. Now we can imagine something else. Imagine another one of God's creatures. Touch an angel. Not someone who you think is pretty, whom you think is an angel. Try to touch an angel. A living spiritual being of majesty and awe a messenger of the Most High God who beholds him face to face. And can you? No. Because he does not have our humanity. He is not one of us. Now as the letter to the Hebrews tells us, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Now by nature, the angels are far above us, but by God's grace, he lifts us up above the very same angels. No, you have to see the God-made man, the infinite, made finite and small, the omnipotent, made weak and helpless, the creator, made a creature of his very creation. Touch your face again, and his is a human face that smiles upon you. Touch your eyes. Because at the last day, he will look at you with human eyes and whom you, each of us, upon our beloved Redeemer is holy Job prophesies, whom I myself shall see and my eyes shall behold and not another's. This is my hope laid up in my bosom. St. Matthew makes the whole business of this incarnation concrete. Here is how Christ became not a man in some abstract sense, but man in the concrete sense, the son of Mary, the foster son of Joseph, descended from so many human generations. When St. John proclaims that the word became flesh, he does not mean flesh simply as an abstract. Because God does not love flesh in the abstract, but God loves each creature he created in flesh so much that he took upon himself that very same flesh. The St. John tells us elsewhere that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. He is the word of life. Love has definitively been revealed now, not as an abstract, not as a distant being, but in a manner, in a person that we could finally come to understand, to see, to feel, to hear, 
flesh of our flesh. And God continues to act to us in a very human way through our senses. The invisible God, beyond human comprehension, made real, present, and to our senses perceptible, even if the God mystery is hidden beneath. This is what Catholics mean when we say that we have an incarnation, an essential flesh. Our Lord again took on flesh, real human flesh, fully human. In the sacraments, we see, we hear, we smell. And yes, of course, we even touch and taste. As the Psalms tell us, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is not just an abstract. This is something that we can come to know. This is a link, a reminder, a connection between the senses and the experience of the Lord fulfilled for us in the Eucharist. In a world of fast food, and we can put food in quotes here, but in a world where families, if they are together, and frequently all sit down at the same meal, in a world where eating together is not so much a creative act of love as much as an ungracious act of killing food on the way to another meeting or event. In this world, we've lost something when we've separated food and family, food and love. The convivium, the convivial, has surrendered in many ways to the convenient. So our Lord longs to restore this leisurely celebrated intimate family meal to his children in a very human manner, in a familial manner, yet united to his Godhead. There is an intimacy here that we instinctively know exists, but we overlook so often. We say we worship in spirit and in truth, yes, but we also say the highest worship is in the Mass with all the bodily senses engaged. Did our Lord not command us to engage again to do the Mass in memory of him at the critical moment before his passion as his last act of worship together with the apostles? Wouldn't that seem important? The question for us is why? Well, we can lose. We can feel that we have lost contact with God. Imagination can deceive and be deceived. We can feel excited with high energy praise music one week and then feel nothing the next. Did God somehow change? Even when we worship in spirit, we are so often distracted in prayer. We don't mean to be distracted. We don't want to be distracted. We don't want maybe even to nod off, but that is human weakness. It is not a lack of faith or absence of God. All those things are good, but they lack a certain something, and that something is that sacramental experience. The sacramental experience, we see the priest. We see a remembrance of Christ preparing the sacred meal, the very same sacred meal at the Last Supper, the meal connected irrevocably, regardless of our subjective state, to that concrete sacrifice at Calvary, to the resurrection, to God in heaven. We can hear the bells calling us to worship, the words of the minister as he carries out the sacraments, the very word of God spoken through human lips in the scriptures. We can smell the sweetness of the wine made the substance of God, the incense rising up in an odor of sanctity pleasing to God. We can taste the very bread made God, even more real, even closer than these things are to you at mass is your God. All these things serve to remind us that God indeed came in the flesh for those of us in the flesh. Everything you see, everything you hear tonight, everything you smell this glorious day, everything you touch here, it is as sure a sign of God's love as if very hand were to descend from heaven and wipe the tears off your face. If his very lips were to kiss your forehead, if his very lips were to call you my delight, as the prophet Isaiah says, or to whisper in your very ears, I love you, my child, more than a mother to love her very own child. This is the love we can know, we can see, we can hear, we can touch. 
this time, it's personal, very personal. And that person is you. If you ever doubt God's love for you, again, touch your face. His face is your face. Touch your eyes, because he saw as you see. Touch your lips. He spoke those tender and saving words of forgiveness with human lips. And touch your ears because he longs to hear with his own ears your joys and sorrows in prayer. And that, my friends, is the meaning of Christmas in the flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
our response to each petition is Erogamus Audino. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Andrew, and all the bishops of the church, that their life teaching, preaching, and pastoral care will proclaim the saving truth of incarnation to all. Dominu motemus, derogamus audinos. For our country and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign for all. Dominu motemus, derogamus audinos. For families, that the graces of Christmas will draw family members together in lasting bonds of love. Dominu motremus, erogamus audinos. For the sick and suffering of our parish, especially Dave Brennan, the McClinton family, all COVID-19 victims and those who care for them, those who have asked for our prayers, and those for whom we have promised to pray. Dominu motemus, erogamus audinos. For all who have died, especially Max Poto, whom we remember at this Mass, that they may raise up to the fullness of heavenly life in Christ Jesus. Dominu motremus, erogamus audinos. For all who are on the Holy Family prayer list, and all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Dominu motremus, Erogamus audinos. Loving Father, through the birth of Jesus Christ, your Son, you have given us a new hope. Take all our doubts and fears and replace them with the glory of our newborn Savior. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Clementissime Pater, Eriesum Christum, Filium Tuum Dominum Nostrum, Supplices Rogamus Ac Petimum, Utia Cepta Habeas Et Benedica Ex Dona, Ex Munera, Ex Santa Sacrificia Hili Bahata, In Primis Que Tibi Operimus Progressia Tua Santa Catolica, Quam Pacificare Custodire Adunare, et credere di neri toto veterato, una cum pamlo tuo papo venoso Francisco, ed antisus e nostro Andrea, et omnibus ortodoxis atque catolice, ed apostolice fidei cultoribus. Memento Domine pamlorum, famo dunque tuarum, et onium circumstantium, Forum civis fides, omnita est enota devotio, 
pro quibus tibi offerimus, vel qui tibi offerunt hosta patricium laudis, pro ses tuis que omnibus, pro remissione animarum suarum, pro spes salutis en incomitatis tuhe, tibi quet prerunt vota suo eterno Deo vivo et vero. Comunicantes, et nostem sacratissimam celebrantes, quam beate Mariae, in temerata virginitas, quic mundo edidi, salvat orhem, seret memoriam venerantes in primis gloriose iusem, semper virgines Mariae, genetricis iusem Dei et omni nostri Iesu Christi. Et beati Iosef eiusem virginis ponti, et beatorum apostolorum ac martyrum tuorum, Petri et Pauli Andre, Iacobi Ioannis, Tome Iacobi, Filipi Bartolomei, Matei, Simoni Cesarei, Plini, Cleri, Clementi, Sisti, Corneli, Cipriani, Lorenzi, Cristogoni, Ioannis et Pauli, Cosme, Damiani, et Omnium Sanctorum Tuorum, Porum meritis precipus me concedas ut in omnibus protectiones tune muni amor auxilio, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Anc igitur oblationem servitutis nostre, seret cum te familiae tue quesmus Domine, ut placatus accipia, si esque nostros en tua pace disponas, aque vertenna damnazioni nos eriti, en el exforum tuorum mia iubeas rege numerari, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Quam oblatio honem tu Deus in nonibus quesemus, benedictam, adscriptam, ratam, razonabilem, Acceptabilem que facere digneri, ut nobis corpus et sanguis fiat illecissimi filio tuo, Domini nostri Iesu Christi. Qui privie quam patere etus, accepit manem panem in sanctos et venerados manus tuas, et elevatis oculis in celus, Ace Deum Patrem Sum Omnipotentem, Tibi gratia sagent benedictit, Pregis et equi discipuli suis dice. Aha cipite manducate ex hoc omnem, Hoc est enim corpus meum, Quod pro vobis adetur. Mili mohodo posto antenatum est, accipiens et conclecarum calicem, in sanctas et venerables manus tuas, item tibi gratia sagens benedictit et equi discipuli suis dice. Accipite et pite ex eo omnem, ite sed in calis sanguinis mehi, Novi er eterni testamenti, qui pro vobis et pro mutis et fundetur, in remissionem peccatorum. O facite meam commemorationem,
nostri, am beate pasti iorni, ne non ab imperis resurrectioni, ser in celos gloriose ascensioni, oferimus precae maestati tue, te tuis donis actati, ostiam puram, ostiam sanctam, ostiam immaculata, anem sanctum vit, vit eterne, et calicem salutis perpetue. Supraque propitio ac sereno vultor espicere dingeri, et a cessa habere sicuti a cessa habere, dignatus es munera cuiosi a haber, et sacrificium patriarche nostri abrahae, et quod tibi obsolitimus sacerdos suos melchisede, sanctum sacrificium immaculataham ostia, Suplice rogamus, omnipotent Deus, iubec et perferi per manus sancti angeli tui, in sublime altare tuom, in conspectu divine maestati tue, sus quoc core cartaris participatione, sacro sanctum fili tui corpus et sanguinem sum serimus, omni benedictioni ceresi, Ecclesia replehamu per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Memento etiam Domine, amulorum palunque tuarum, qui nos preceferunt cum signo fide et dormiunt in sonno pati. Ipsis Domine, Ronibus in Christo, Quecentibus, Locum Refrigeri, Lucis et Pati, Potem Giudia, Se Precamus, Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Nobis Poco Peccatoribus, Pam Lois Tuis, De Multitudine Misterationum Tuarum Sperantibus, Partem Aliquam, Et Societatem Donare Dignieris, Om tui sanctis apostolis e martiribus, Om Ioane Stefano Matea Barnaba Ignacio Alexandro Marcellino Petro, Felicitate perpetua Agatha Lucia, Agnete Cecilia Anastasia Nonibus Sanctis Tuis, In traporum nos consortium non estimator meriti, Sed venie questumus vartit ora mite, Per Christum Dominum Nostrum, per quem hec omnia Domine, semper bona crea sanctificat, civificat, benedicis et prestas nobis. Per ictum ectum ipso et in ipso, et tibi Deo Patria Nilsenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremus, precepti salitaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater Noster, Qui est in ceri, sanctificetur nomen tuu, adveniat venium tuu, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo est in terra, panem nostrum cotianum da nobis odie, Et imite nobis de vita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus de victoribus nostri, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, sed libera nos a mano. Libera nos questimus, Domine Aronius Malis, 
da propitius facem in Deibus nostri, ut obe misericordiae tue aiuti, et a peccatos timus semper liberi, et a omni perturbationis securi, expectantes beatam spem, et a betum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Renium et hoc est saha, et floria in secuna. Domine Iesu Christe, qui disiste apostolis tuis, facem renco vobis, facem meam do vobis, ne respitia secato nostra sed fidem ecclesiae tue, e ancam secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare quadunare di mieri, qui vives et regnas in secula seculorum.
जनिति मिली तो ये रसन सीधा नाथी भी था तो मेरे था ही तो युद्ध चले तो भी सेरियो फांसी बोले ये पोसा मो तो ये भी वैसे दुनिया की सेकुला सेकुलो हो रो Thank you. 